car a video connection from an external device, from like a mobile device. And yeah, so we won't have to use DVDs anymore for watching videos. We can watch videos from USB storage. So this is gonna be an awesome video. I haven't seen a video like this for the E60 on YouTube. Yeah, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys what parts you need. I ordered this from Beamer Tech and they just uh, shipped it to, uh, in the mail today. I just got it. So I'll show you what comes in the package here. And uh, you might be able to order these parts on your own, but uh, oh, this is one of my tools. You're gonna need this later. So just uh, put that aside for now. All right, so what you get in the kit right here is you get a few wires. So the main wire you're gonna use right here, I'll show you the, this is the part number, and it's the FBAS wire right here so there's, there's there's the wire and because right now we're gonna need to make a video connection from the back of the CIC the head unit in here with these type of wires right here and then we're gonna connect them to the um, USB port in the armrest right down here so this cable it's gonna need to go from the back of the CIC in into this armrest right here, just like that. All right. And they also send you a USB port. It looks the same as the one I have already, but it says AV in, and it has four little pins on the back, right there. And here's the model number, right there. Be a little. There you go, you can see the model number. So it's got the four four pin USB port. So you're gonna need that as well. And then the last thing you're gonna need, so stay tuned to the very end because I'm not gonna tell you which mobile devices. It only works on some specific mobile devices, but you'll find out at the very end of the video which one it is. And you also need a cable. They gave me this one, the official OEM BMW cable right here. So it has a USB, and a 3.5 millimeter jack on one end. So we're gonna to need to connect both of these at the very end to get the video functionality. And here's the part number for this one as well. All right, so those are the parts we're gonna need. We'll put that aside because we won't need the parts. And we also they also give you a little connector piece as well because these three wires that you see right here, they're gonna all connect into this, this little plastic connector right here. And I think it has it has a model number or a part number also. There you go. There's the part number for this connector piece. Now this connector piece is going to be going into the uh, the auxiliary port like this. It's going to go right in the back, like there. After we put we pin the wires into it. All right. So that's that's that. We'll put that aside for now. And you're also going to need some basic tools. So we're going to be, if any of you guys want to do a CIC retrofit, because there are some prerequisites for this job, you definitely need to have the CIC iDrive like this. And you also need to have the comm box in the trunk. And you'll know you have the comm box if you have a connected drive right here, an office, and if you have Bluetooth audio, and if you can connect your iPhone via USB in the armrest, and then it shows the album art then you have the comm box. So you need the comm box, you need the CIC, and there is some coding specific to this retrofit that I'll show you at the very end of this. And uh, yeah, so you need your plastic remover piece. And yeah, this is a great video if you guys wanna know how to install the CIC because I'm gonna show you how to take apart the whole dashboard and we're gonna get to the back of the head unit here. And we're also gonna remove the trim piece for the center console. Now, one tip that I recommend here is this USB port right here. I'll show you guys. This USB port, you can actually uh, pry it out without having to take apart the center console. Like if you've seen my previous video on how to install the controller right here, the controller, I show you guys how to pop the USB port from underneath, but there's an easier way. If you have this pick tool right here, this metal pick tool, you can pick at the very bottom of this USB port, you can pick at the very bottom and then you can you can pry it out like that, which is way easier. 
So once you plot it out, we have a little opening right here. As you can see, I can I can put my I can put my finger in there. And the great thing about that opening is because we need to root that that uh, video video connection. So first, we're gonna we're gonna take apart this uh, this cover for the transmission, which is very easy. So if you have the sport transmission, you just pop the leather boot off. Then you put your hand underneath here, and then you can lift this over. And now it's very easy to take out the sport button. You just unclip it like this from the side, and then you just push it down. So then we can uh, we can toss this aside. And now you're also gonna need. I recommend for this job, it'll make your life a lot easier. Is this like wire? You can get this from like a dollar store. You see the wire, aluminum wire, and you can feed the wire right here through the USB port and as you can see I fit it underneath the controller and it should pop up it should pop up underneath here and as you can see right here so there's my aluminum wire see so it'll be it'll make feeding feeding our FBAS cable video cable a lot easier just via this aluminum wire all right, so once we have that, that wire in place, we need to take the head unit out. But before we do that, we want to disconnect the battery. So just follow me to the back of the car. We have to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. So let's go in the trunk of the E60 over here. And we gotta take out this corner trim piece right here. It's very easy to take out. It's just held in by two clips that look like this, very easy. And I put the uh, trim piece, the corner piece right there. And now you want to get your uh, Torx adjustable screwdriver. You want to get your 10 millimeter socket right there, 10 millimeter. You want to get down into the corner right there. As you can see that nut. So we're going to take our Torx 10 millimeter and we're going to switch it to this one here. And we're going to loosen that bolt, as you can see. Just loosen it. Right there. So as you can see, the battery turned off. And now, just to be safe here, we want to take a microfiber cloth and put it in there. So that we don't get any accidental connection. There we go. Our battery is nice and safe. And yeah, so the next part is we're gonna take apart the uh, dash and to get to the CIC head unit, all right? We'll get back in the car in three, two, one. So after you disconnect the negative terminal on the battery, we can proceed to removing the dashboard so we can access the head unit right here. So as you can see, in order to remove this whole panel right here, you get out your plastic trim remover piece and you want to wedge it in at a few different pressure points because this is held in by four spikes so you want to pry in right here right here in the corner and you want to pry in gently 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 and the pressure points are actually released in sequence so you can hear a pop from this side don't try prying anymore then go to the other side pry a little bit from that side You'll hear it pop from there, and then slowly you'll be able to get it out. So I've already un uh, released the, the, the four spikes. So as you can see, I'm going to take this out right now. So, oops, there we go. As you can see, it's coming out. Want to maybe open the door? <laughs> open the door. Yeah. And as you can see, it's connected to the vents right here. And we're just gonna pull it out and right here we're gonna pop out the hazard and power lock switch so we're gonna get out be careful here because you have some trim behind here behind these vents and right here we're gonna pop this out from the, from the back as you can see and now we have a wiring harness right behind it you see that and you want to remove that 
before we proceed any further. There we go. So that's what that looks like, the hazard and power lock switch. So we can put that to the side. And now we can take this out for good. So let's do that right now. We're not for good for a little while. There we go. Nice and easy. So now we're going to take this out and we're going to proceed further in three, two, one. All right, so after you remove this panel right here, the wooden or actually metal metal panel down here, we're going to need to remove these two screws right here. They're actually Phillips screws. So just get your Phillips uh, bit on your screwdriver and just take the other hand. There's one. There we go. Take that one out. And now we want to pry. Get our um, get your pry tool right here. And first, actually, you can gently start with your hand. Just be very gentle with this. Cause it's in, it's in there. Be patient with this. There we go. See the pit, the trim, trim removal piece tool definitely helps. There we go. So there's that one. Now there's going to be, this is your climate control. So we want to zoom in right here. And it's a great thing that we disconnected the battery because we can take all these connections out in peace. So there's three connections on the back right here of the climate control. So this one, the blue one, there's a little, little tab you can press right here. So you just, you can, you can, you press the tab right where my, where my finger is, and then you can slide. So you can, there we go. You gotta push underneath, release the tab, and as you can see, it slides out like that. And there's that blue one. Now this one here is just on the other side. Same idea. It's got a tab up top. Press here, and you can release it. It comes out like this. Now the last one is the power for your for your climate control, and that one's just easy. You just pinch it. Well, it should come out. Be gentle here. There we go, and the power is out. So we can toss this to the side for now. We just put this behind us now we want to move further here move further along we want to remove this this lower trim piece first I recommend here you pop pop this uh, ashtray cover and take out this cover here so this cover comes out easily and you just unclip it there we go put that behind us make our job easier Now, you can pop this back in now, no problem. Now you wanna pry here, with your trim remover piece. You can use your uh, plastic trim remover piece and you can pry this out. And it's actually not as tricky as it looks. You gotta be careful. You gotta start up top right here because it's held in by two clips. See right here, this clip and that clip. And you pry those clips out first and then it comes out here. And then there, it's got two more clips at the bottom, one and two. And then it's got two wiring harnesses on the left and on the right. Here you can disconnect this one here. That one goes in here. And then the other one right here. See this pink one? Goes right there. And now we can move this out of the way and proceed further. Now we want to get our Phillips Phillips screwdriver and we want to take out and take out the CIC screws put the screws in a safe spot so you remember where they are
Alright. So we got those four screws out. And it looks like yeah, we can take our CIC out. Yes, but before we do that, what I want to do here is I'm going to remove the uh, center console trim right here. So to do that, we want to get our Torx T20 bit, put it on our screwdriver here, take out these uh, T20 screws down here. Get this one also. Right now we want to, before we take this off, we want to put some tape around here. So we'll do that real quick. All right, so as you can see, I've taken apart the um, center console trim. It's pretty easy with your plastic trim remover piece. You can pry underneath, uh, it's held on by two clips right here. So I removed that. And as you can see, I've taken out the CIC. And to connect our new video cable right here, this cable, the FBAS cable. You need also, because as you can see, my this is the wiring harness that I, I popped out. And let's get a, get a closer look. See this, this empty, this empty slot right there? That where my finger is? That's where we're gonna need to connect it. And it's gonna correspond with the pins, pins right here. So these are labeled one to 12. And it looks like my, the slot here for mine, this, the one where we need is empty. So what I did is I, I happened to have this one right here that I got when I, I ordered a USB port from Amazon for 26 bucks. I'll put a link in the description and they send you one of these. Now this right here has a, another little piece right here that goes into it. As you can see this piece right here. Now this piece, is labeled on the back right here as you can see let's take a look well you put this inside here it goes in this and they're labeled 1 to 12 so we're gonna need to put the um, the cable that we got here the FBAS cable as you can see starting from the the top left that's 1 and the bottom right is 12 so this cable right here one is blue, one is uh, white, and one is clear. So we're gonna put uh, the uh, the blue one is gonna go in the bottom right. The white one is gonna go in number two. So the white one is gonna go in number two slot, and the blue one is gonna go in number twelve slot. And then the clear one we can put in number eleven slot. And then we're gonna pop the black thing into here, and then pop this in into there, right? And then we're gonna clip the wiring harness back in. But before we do make the connection, we gotta root the wire here. That's the tricky part. And you definitely need this wire feeder, this aluminum, it definitely comes in handy. Cause we can, we, I, put, I put the wire underneath here, underneath the ashtray. And I found an opening at the top right here. Let's see. See right here. See, that's the secret. So we're gonna feed, we're gonna feed our wire. We're gonna feed this guy right here. We're gonna, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna tape it. I'm gonna tape it to the uh, to the wire feeder, to this aluminum wire right here with some electrical tape. And then, and then we're gonna feed it down here. So it comes around behind that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna feed it through here. So we can, I've already done it. See, I feed it at once. I just tied it with, and that was successful. I got it to go underneath the controller. So you can do this whole thing without having to remove the center console. Like it tells you in the instructions, which will save you a lot of time. All you gotta do is, this is why I left this uh, this USB port open, so I can get access through here. It's really important to get that access. And yeah, so I'm gonna connect everything, and we're gonna test it out. All right, so as you can see, I've connected the FBAS cable to the CIC, and yeah, the blue one actually goes into number number two slot, and the white one goes into number 12, and then the clear one goes into number 11, as you can see. Let's try to get a little bit closer. 
closer in there. It's a little, little blurry. But yeah, that's in there. The wire is fed through through here. And now I'm gonna feed the other end of the wire. As you can see, I've, I've taped it to this electrical tape. And I got my wire in here. And we're gonna feed that, feed that through. Put that in here. So you feed it through the gear shift compartment right here. Nice and slow. And look at that. Came out of there. And there we go, perfect. Look at that, nice and neat, tucked away. We can slide the CIC in. And then, just have to untape this and uh, connect this to the green, green connector. Pop it in the auxiliary port right there. And hopefully this will work. So we'll slide this in. And so I turned the car on and I connected the, um, right here, the green connector. I put uh, the white wire goes into slot one and the blue wire goes into slot two on the green connector. And I connected my uh, special cable right here that goes from USB and 3.5 millimeter. And I got it hooked up with my iPhone 4S. And this phone is unbelievable. This is such a badass phone. This is an amazing iPhone, the iPhone 4S. Uh, this is Apple's best 30 pin device. And it still loads pretty fast today if you keep it in iOS 6. So please, if you have an iPhone 4 or 4S, do not update it. I'll put a link in the description showing you how to uh, change it back to iOS 6. Because in iOS 6, this phone is still very, very usable. So as you can see, it is connected into the armrest USB port and auxiliary port right here. And it's also charging. And right here, you can see it's loaded up on the iDrive. So if we click in right here, right here we can see our movies. And uh, I'll show you after this how to get the coding so you can get video functionality from your armrest USB port because it is not set by default in the coding. So yeah, by default, if you don't have the uh, video connection right here, when you're playing a movie, it'll just play the sound from your movie from the iPhone's digital signal. But uh, now that we have the retrofit completed, we can just go into, um, right here we can go to video and now we can see our um, our video playlist right here so i can just download mp4 files from my macbook and then sync them to my iphone 4s and it's got 64 gigabytes so if you guys can still find one of these phones you should definitely pick it up because it's the best device to use for this retrofit for the e60 and um right here we can just click on any movie right here let's say uh, gladiator and click play and then if we click on the video app you can change to whatever part of the movie you want right here which is a lot better than a DVD and it's a lot faster right here so we'll play this is one of the better parts of the movie My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. And right here you can skip really precisely to exactly the part of the movie you want. So right here. And now we can we can change to any other type of content. Let's say we want uh, a music video right here.
Another thing I discovered right here because the iPhone 4S, it has uh, internet, but it's mainly through Wi-Fi. Like it has 3G, but it's not the fastest connection. And I don't want to take my SIM card and um, put it in just for internet. And even if I did, 3G does not load YouTube very quickly. So I thought of a solution right here because I can use my uh, iPhone 7 Plus to create a personal hotspot and the 7 Plus has way faster LTE internet and then I can just go right here in my um, right here on my on my phone and then I can just go into settings and connect to the personal hotspot from my iPhone 7 so we can use the internet the really fast internet from my iPhone 7 and the video connection from the um, iPhone 4 right here and now they took away the YouTube app from from this iOS but you can still go into Safari and load YouTube within Safari so now you can load up YouTube videos and we just click play right here now it'll load a YouTube video to shoot a video and yeah so let's do a nice overview of the car to start as you can see i uh, fully and we can skip to any part of the car so or video we want the first year that the n54 three liter triple gallon just in, in the tail has the lci the felt faith also has adaptive LED tail lights. Like this is one of the reasons I wanted to get this yeah. car. So yeah, this is like the best way to get um, movies in your car from your from your USB. You can also select them right here from the menu on the E60. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I haven't seen a YouTube video for this for the E60 before. And if you click. If you click video right here, it'll make it full screen. Alright, so now I'm going to show you guys how to do the coding for the video functionality in the armrest USB port on your, on your CIC. So you need to have a Windows laptop, like I have a Surface Pro 3 right here. And you need to have BMW tools installed. You just need an OBD2 port uh, cable as well. I have it connected just over there. And the other end is in the USB. You load up Impa right here. Check to see if the connection is good. And looks like yes, the cable is detected. The ignition's on. There's a connection that's good. So now we load up NCS Expert. Now we want to load a profile right here. Load profile, expert 10 modus. Now we want to click start. Chassis, E60. Click OK, pass. And now right there, it's going to make a connection with the car. As you can see, there's the VIN number. Let's get it to focus. Now we want to, right here, go back. And we want to um, process ECU. So we'll click CIC right here for the head unit. Click OK. And right here, it'll show this CIC.C09 file. Now we want to go change job. Right here, we want to go code data and lesson. Because you want to read the ECU. And then we go execute job. It says coding active, coding ended. Right there. So when that happens, right here we can go into our uh, NCS dummy. And we want to load up the TRC file that was just created when we read the CIC. So right here we go to browse and it'll be in our work folder right here. So now if you want to back up your, your CIC, 
There is a CS. This this is the file that was just created right here, April 30th, 658, 659 right there. So if you want to back up your CIC, copy this file because it was just read by NCS Expert right here. It is the current ECU code. So we click open. Now we want to click our uh, CIC. We want to find the um, the file right here. So I think it was 0 0.09. Let's take a look. So let's just try this one. So it's not that one. I think it might be a different one. Let's try it. Keep trying until it says right here. Right here. So this is the correct one. CIC.C1A. And now we want to find the option right here for auxiliary. So right here. As you can see, AUX1. So the pins that we installed earlier in the back of the CIC in uh, pins 2, 11, and 12. Well, they correspond to this AUX1 connection. But by default, right here in the code, it is set to standard. So that means it doesn't give any video signal. So we want to change it to WIRT21 right here. So that's the main change. But then we also want to enable USB for both USB ports because the comm box has two, the blue and the black port. And right now, the one I have in the armrest is connected to the black port. So we want to enable both. So let's find USB video. See right here, CDMM USB video. So that's the video coming out of the comm box from the blue and the black ports. So you want to click both. And then you're going to have right here, you're going to have um, this video option on the, on the CIC. All right, so there you go. You make those two changes. Then when you make the changes, you want to go right here. You want to go export and you want to go export man right here. The first one, you want to click that. Now you want to close this and then you want to go back into your NCS expert and then you want to go change job and you want to click on SG Coderin, Coderin right here. You want to click OK. And then after you want to click execute job and then it's going to write the changes that you made to the CIC. All right. So that's the coding. Pretty simple. And that concludes the retrofit. And another really cool thing is after you organize your movies on your um, MacBook, on your iTunes, it's really nice because you can go split screen as well. And uh, the picture looks really good actually make sure whatever movies you put on this make sure they're 16 by 9 so that they'll fit right here nice widescreen so right here you can, you can click option and you can go with split screen and you can put whatever you want on your split screen as well and you can use the steering wheel control right here to shuffle through your movies which I find is awesome and it will remember the last place on the uh, on the video file in the iPhone. The iPhone remembers. So you can put the movies exactly to which parts of the movies you like, all organized before you get, get ready for your drive. And you can control it all through the steering wheel control. So yeah, this is a really nice feature to have. You can get all your favorite movies. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> So comment down below which one of the three upgrades that you think is the best out of the three, the controller, the uh, new gear shift, or the uh, video from the iPhone 4S. Yeah, I'm really happy because this is an OEM retrofit. There's no need to add anything else. All the parts for OEM. And yeah, you can just have all your favorite movies here. And I tucked away the iPhone is really nice and tucked away right, right here in the armrest. You don't need the snap-in adapter. So you can have it in there and you can close this. And then you can control it also with the iDrive controller.
or you can control it down here. All we gotta do is just click back, and right here we got our we got our movies. So we can select any movie we want. This is a, one of my favorites right here. And we can select any scene of the movie that we want to play from. We're okay. Tell you.